Hi there. In this video, I will tell you how to get started with Raspberry Pi Pico programming using MicroPython. Uh, the Raspberry Pi Pico boards are available in a couple of variants and uh, these are the three popularly available forms that you get in the market. The standard Raspberry Pi Pico comes without any headers, so which means that if you want to prototype them on a breadboard, you will need to solder your own headers on them. This is most widely available in the market and uh, it, if you have some good soldering skills, you can actually solder headers on this board directly on your own. Uh, in order to do that, you also need to buy headers separately. Like you see here, though the headers might look quite long, you can actually find out how much fits in here and cut it off. Like you see here, once you cut it, you can raise the use the other pass through the headers in this place into the pins and it seems to fit in perfectly here. Of course, the biggest effort is you may need to solder every single pin carefully on this particular board. In fact, uh, I bought one of the models of Raspberry Pi Pico, which is a Pico W without the headers and I soldered the headers on my own. Yeah, my soldering skills are not the best as of now because it's been almost like more than 25 years since I've been doing regular soldering. After a long hiatus of 25 years, I started to use the soldering iron recently and I realized that my skills are not up to mark at this moment. Also, partly it's because of my eyesight. I should have used my glasses. But nevertheless, this works, though the headers might not look as perfect like what you would get with a machine soldered boards. Uh, it gets the job done. But yeah, it as long as it works, it's fine. So you could use this. And uh, you get the one without the headers. You also get one with headers pre-soldered in the market. This is called as a Raspberry Pi Pico H, the H to indicate with headers. Um, this comes pre-soldered, looks very nice, but it's also quite expensive because uh, when I bought it, this pr the price of this board was almost double the price of the one without the headers. So you wanna make a call whether you just wanna buy two boards without the headers and solder them on your own as a real uh, DIY professional or you can get one with the headers. So whichever suits you. And uh, this particular board that you see here has something extra. It's not found in both of these boards, right? This is a Wi-Fi chip. And this one is a Raspberry Pi Pico W. There's also a variant of Raspberry Pi Pico WH, which comes with headers pre-soldered. I got the one without the headers and soldered the headers on my own. If you want to use Wi-Fi support on a Raspberry Pi Pico today, you can get the WH board which will be as capable as the ESP series microcontrollers, which have Wi-Fi by default. But the Raspberry Pi Pico does not have Wi-Fi by default. This has it. This also is priced slightly high on the higher side compared to the Raspberry Pi Pico or the Pico H. Of course, uh, some of you might even argue that uh, the ESP series microcontrollers are way cheaper with onboard Wi-Fi. But then if you're using an ESP8266, you know that I've I would have, uh, I'm not sure if I told you this, but uh, the ESP8266 is based on a single core CPU, whereas this has dual cores. That could be one advantage if you want to leverage them. Um, when it comes to getting the Raspberry Pi Pico, you can choose between these three options at this moment, as of 2023. Uh, all of these are based on the same chip, which is the RP2040 chip, microcontroller as such. And, um, I will talk about all the pinouts and the pin pin layouts and everything in the next video. But for now, I want to get you started first on getting this to work. All the Raspberry Pi Pico boards come with a special switch over here. It's a push button. This is called as a boot selector switch. And this can be used to reset the prom and install new firmware onto this board. And uh, when you get this board afresh, this might be quite blank, it would be almost blank. So yeah, it's generally blank. And you need to install MicroPython on this or any of your Arduino sketch programs targeted for Raspberry Pi Pico if you really choose to. Uh, in order to load any firmware onto the Raspberry Pi Pico board, you might need a micro USB cable that you can connect to your computer. And yes, it must be a data cable, um, like the one that you see here. Just one, yeah, like the one that you see here. it is. So this is a micro USB to a USB port. 
you connect the USB port onto the free USB slot on your computer and you can connect this to your micro USB port on the Raspberry Pi Pico. So you need to first connect this in here and then you can connect the other side of the USB onto your computer. And a very important thing about this USB cables that I found, there are a couple of cables in the market which are not data cables. They only provide power. So you need a proper USB data cable. So be sure of that. If you connect this cable onto your computer, this should be detected a fresh, a fresh Raspberry Pi Pico board should be detected as a new drive. If you don't see a new drive coming up on your computer, then it's pretty obvious that either there's a problem with the cable or in, if you're using Windows, it could also be a problem with your Windows setup, now, reinstall or reboot or any of these things might work. Many people on Windows do face problems. I'm not a Windows user, but I will be demonstrating on a Windows setup just for this particular video, right? For many of you might be using that operating system. I would recommend using Linux and it's quite easy to work on Linux as for development. So I think you could use that. Um, sometimes people take the uh, advantage of using a Raspberry Pi, real Raspberry Pi SBC, single board computer running on Linux, maybe an Ubuntu or a Raspberry Pi OS, and then program on the Raspberry Pi Pico from that. You can also choose to do that if that's convenient for you. But otherwise you can wire this up on your computer and then see if it can recognize a new drive. If you don't see a new drive coming up on Windows, uh, one problem could be the cable. Try changing the cable. Sometimes you might want to change the different USB ports on your computer. Sometimes some USB ports might have worn out. You don't know that depending on your computer or worst case, try to connect to another computer and see if it works. If that works on another computer and not on yours, Obviously, this could be a problem with your Windows setup. Just troubleshoot that. That's up to you, right? But anyways, I'm, going to, I'm just going to connect this to my computer. I have one of them that's already connected, and I'm going to show you how that's done. Move this aside. Uh, here's a Raspberry Pi Pico connected via the micro USB, and the USB runs onto my laptop through a USB hub, which is not part of the video. I'm not showing in the video, but it's, it's a clutter. So it's connected onto the computer. And now once, once it's connected, you can just bring up your Windows environment. Uh, let me just do that right away. Yeah. So if you're on a Windows setup, what you, can need, what you need to do is that you might want to uh, first check whether this particular Raspberry Pi Pico is detected on your computer by opening up your file manager, the file explorer, what do you call it? And when you scroll down, you should be able to see an entry like this along with your C drive and any other drives you might have. You will see a drive labeled as RPI RP2. When you see this kind of a drive, this means that the Raspberry Pi Pico is ready to be flashed. Now you can open this drive and you would generally find some file like an index or HTML and you might have also have a file with a, a text document in here. You can go and read it, but I will tell you how to get started with MicroPython anyways. In order to install MicroPython on this, you might want to first open up your web browser and head on to micropython.org website. So once you are on this website called micro, micropython.org, uh, you'll find a download link in here. MicroPython is available for variety of boards, variety of uh, microcontroller boards. So you'll see the list of firmwares and list of firmwares for different boards supported in here. Uh, you might want to select the vendor. Under vendor, you'll see a lot of vendor boards being listed in here. And one such board you will see is listed below here as the Raspberry Pi. Mm, where do I see that? Yeah, here it is. On my machine, you can see the Raspberry Pi is listed towards the end in this column. Click on this and it will head you, it'll head to that particular page. And once you are on the page, you can verify which kind of Raspberry Pi board you're using. If you are using a normal Raspberry Pi board, like you see here, you can select the first option that you see here. But if you are using a Pico W, which is with the Wi-Fi module on board, you might want to select the Raspberry Pi Pico W over here. So I'm going to select the Raspberry Pi uh, Pico normal, which is how my board looks like, right? I'm going to select this and when you scroll down, you'll find the firmware for MicroPython in here. 
at this moment of recording, I believe that uh, there's a latest version of MicroPython available, which is the version 1.21. This is in October 2023 when I'm recording. In fact, this was released just on 5th of October this month. So I'm going to select this file. And you can directly, when you use a web browser, you can say save as. You can save as. Okay, you can click on the save as button. And you can directly copy it onto the Raspberry Pi board. You can save it right in here. And uh, click on save button. You can also save it into downloads and then drag that file from the downloads into this drive. That also would do. But I'm just going to directly save it into this particular drive. And the moment the download is done, which should take a few seconds, one thing that you'll notice is that the drive just disappears. You won't see the drive anymore. This actually means that the firmware is now flashed onto the drive successfully. When the firmware is written onto the drive, it automatically disconnects it uh, from, the, from your drive listing. And once that happens, you can now connect to your Raspberry Pi Pico using your Tony editor. So you can open up Tony. All right, I do have some bare examples in here from one of my training sessions. Let me close it. Uh, by default, Tony, Tony might start off with your local Python setup. So you might want to make Tony recognize MicroPython running on the Raspberry Pi Pico. In order to do that, you can select the tools and that in, the, in the menus, right? You can select tools. Under tools, you might want to go to options. And in this options window, you have this tab called interpreter. Select this tab. And under this tab, you have an option here. Which kind of interpreter should Tony use for running your code? This is a drop down, and you can select this drop down. You see a lot of options showing up here. It shows MicroPython, Remote Python, MicroPython for various different boards. And you can see the one for Raspberry Pi Pico. Select this, select this option. After you select this option, for the port below, you can see that try to direct automatically. Uh, I'm not sure if it works, but uh, I would go ahead and click this and uh, it shows where it is connected. So you can select, in my case, it looks like it shows communication port COM1. Let me try that. I'm not sure if it's going to work. Let me try that and click on OK. Whoops, it didn't work. Okay. Oh, looks like uh, the drive is disconnected from my VM. Uh, just one moment, please. Yeah. I'm running Windows on a virtual machine, so yeah, there are some extra things I need to do. But normally, when you go to Options, you should be able to see, uh, when you go to Options and select Interpreter, Select MicroPython for Raspberry Pi Pico. Under port, you should normally see a new USB serial device. That's what you should ideally see here. USB serial device, and it might come with some COM number assignment, like COM3, COM4, COM5. Different numbers can come up. It doesn't matter. It keeps changing across, right? Across different computers. So just check whether you find a USB serial device. And once you see that, select it and click on OK. If all goes well, you should be able to see the MicroPython banner shown up right here. And this particular banner that you can see here shows up as MicroPython for Raspberry Pi Pico with RP2040. It also says type help for information. And you can see this triple greater than prompt, which is the familiar Python REPL. And here you can check whether this really works by using maybe a print. Hello world will do. And it works. It sure works. You can, in fact, now create a new file, uh, any file will do. Maybe you can just want to write a very basic program in here. And maybe you save it. When you try saving a file at this moment with MicroPython enabled in Tony, you will get normally get an option on where to save to, whether you want to save it on your local computer or you want to save it on a Raspberry Pi Pico. So when you select Raspberry Pi Pico, your files get stored on the board. So think of the board is having some kind of flash memory, like your USB storage in a way. So it's going to store it there. 
And you can store all your MicroPython programs inside this board, and then you can execute them as per your, as per your choice. So I'm going to save it here as uh, test.py. And we can OK. And you can also run this program if you want to. When you click on Run, it's going to execute it from your Raspberry Pi Pico. At this moment, this Hello World program is executed by the Raspberry Pi, Pi, uh, Raspberry Pi Pico board. And the output is sent serially via the USB port. And that is what you see here on this console. So this is pretty much it. And installing Raspberry Pi, installing MicroPython on Raspberry Pi Pico is this easy. Uh, if you're using not Windows, but if you're using a Linux system, uh, the process is almost similar, which I'm going to show you in the next video, right? So if you do have any doubts or any questions related to it, feel free, feel free to write on comments. So I will try to address them when I see them. Of course, uh, I will not be able to troubleshoot issues related to Windows. Check it out. Uh, I think this is the process normally, but if you have any other questions related to running MicroPython, or if it doesn't work on your machine, let, let me know. Maybe others would find a solution for the comments. All right then, so thank you. Uh, hope to meet you in another video.